creative ones this is robin dudley house coming to you from my studio in los angeles california um i wanted to um keep the momentum going with the series that i started last week on edith holden and her her watercolor flowers um we're still going to be concentrating on the these are called dog roses kind of like a rose hip here in the states and um so we'll just keep moving in that direction i'm going to move the book in this again um like i said before this is the uh let's see the country diary of an edwardian lady and these are her paintings and illustrations from 1906 so if you wanted to get uh, one of these you can us usually find them on ebay or amazon um, I didn't pay more than $12, I think, for mine, so, you know, you don't, they don't have to be that expensive. And another thing I wanted to show you was, um, if, I uh, wanted to see if you want a tutorial on how to paint these. They're just, uh, clothespins, and they're, um, very simple little roses. They're super fun to make and very quick. So let me know if you want to do that. So for right now, just go ahead and uh, take a piece of paper from an old book. That's what I use for the base. And um, you can tell I've painted in this one. And then I um, just fold it in half like this. This one's pretty fragile. going to move the Edith Holden book and we're going to use this as a sample um, just like we did this one as a sample last time because I uh, directly used her um, illustrations and paintings for these that I had painted in my one rose a day series that I'm um, doing right now as of this video so it looks like I did this portion right here <clears throat> for this one And um, I will try to link these below. I might have to put some more water in this. This is just a, a water color brush that has water in the container thing here. And I use the Jane Davenport watercolor palettes because they're super um, cute <laughs> and portable. And I have both of them there. Uh, this is the Let's see, the neutral palette, and then this is the bright palette, so I use both. You can use whatever watercolors you want. So I don't have any kind of uh, um, wash before I do this. I did do that on... This one here, it has a. I did a coat of, of uh, gesso, but I didn't do that on these ones. So I think we'll just uh, start with a pencil drawing, just a, a very light pencil drawing. And uh, you're going to hold your pencil kind of at the end so you don't press too hard. And this is a little. Is this a bit? No, that's good. I'm going to start up here. It's very loose drawing. This kind of gives you a guideline. And I don't erase anything. I just kind of leave it. And then uh, after I paint, I usually go back over it with a very fine black felt tip pen. Like I did for the last one. So 
So I'm going to continue the sketching. Okay, so now I have that on there. I'm going to uh, start with a little brown and mustard color. And I'm going to kind of squeeze the handle so some water comes out so that I can get a little bit of a background going here. I'm going to do a little bit of shadow blocking in here. So this is the center part of the rose. I'm going to just move my focus here. And um, remember, less is more um, with, with watercolor. Let's see where else maybe I'll do a little bit. <clears throat> In here, oops, that's a little bit too much. I'm going to take some of that off with the brush. There. And I'm going to go over that with a little bit of um, <clears throat> green when uh, I'm ready. And this will be all blended in once I put the pink colors in. A little bit more brown mixed with a little mustard color. I'm just barely touching the inside of the lines and I kind of go outside of the lines on purpose. Now I'm going to do a little green and uh, let's see, I'll try the, reactivating this color over here. Let's just see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go back in with the darker green in a minute. Just going to kind of outline where the green goes. do a little darker green. This one's too bright so I'm mixing it with the olive green and I'll probably add a little bit of maybe this mustard color or this brown. squeeze the receptacle to get a little bit more of the water out, pumping out. OK, 
can always grab, if there's too much water, do you see what's happening here? I'm just kind of grabbing it by wiping it off on the scratch, scratch paper here. If there's too much uh, water pooling. And just so you know, this is <laughs> really rudimentary. This isn't like what I'm showing you isn't um, probably what you would learn in school. It's just kind of how I've learned. And I've also, you know, taken, um, bought some books on it that uh, show how watercolor works. Um, just kind of experiment on my own most of the time. And I have come to find that I like um, having it a little bit messy like this. I'm going to go in where the flowers are starting here so, and darkening them a little with some brown. Just a little tiny bit of brown and I'm kind of moving it up. And a little bit in the veins of the leaves. And I'm probably going to leave it and let it dry because it looks different when it dries. Now I'm going to add some pink. And I'm doing that kind of dusty pink to start with. I might add a little bit more pink. Remember, don't feel the need to color in everything on watercolor. You want some of the white showing through because it gives you highlights, just natural highlights. On this one I did go back in and I added some probably white pen so we might just replicate that with the white watercolor um, when it's dry. pink in here and I'm going to do some over here and I'm going to add some yellow in the center or more of a mustard color I should say are going to go in with the uh, a fine um, black ink pen and outline everything once it's dry. I'm going to add, do a little bit of black over here inside the green. I think this is black. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. No, nope, that's a dark blue. I think this is black. No, nope, that's purple. Here's the black. Mix a little bit with that green and do some over here. Darken that up. Maybe outline a little bit with some brown. Just a little. If your um, paper gets way too wet, you need to dry it before you go on because it's just going to bleed everywhere. And I mean, I do like it when it bleeds, but there's a point where it bleeds so much that you can't even see what the. Um, images anymore and you can just 
wait for it to dry because it dries fast or you could um, hit it with your heat gun. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Okay, it's dry now. So um, we're going to do a little highlighting in here. Um, I had a pen from Jane Davenport that um, got ruined. So it's a smaller white felt tip pen. But you can use something like this. The only thing is, is these are really fat. Like that's a super fat pen. And I could go in there and very gently just mark it. But it's just too big. Um, this is awesome. This is one of my favorite pens. I've been using these for years. It's a Japanese brand. It's a Mitsubishi pencil uh, gel pen, white, and they're the best. They don't. They never clog up. I've never had them clog up. Um, it's by Uniball, Signo Uniball. Pretty widely available at most art stores or online. Maybe Jerry's Artorama or probably can find it on. Um, Amazon too, but those work too. Um, see how easily that comes out. But um, for for this um, tutorial, I'm gonna do it with the white paint right here. And I'm just copy the areas that I'm um, adding the white in. Um, it's just easier that way. And then I'm gonna go in after it's dried and highlight them with the uh, black uh, felt tip pen. It doesn't take much. And a little bit up here. Just All I'm doing is following the same um, illustration that I did the first time. All based on Edith Holden. Okay, that's it. I'm going to dry it with the... Uh, actually, I'm going to do a little bit more in here. I'm going to dry it with the uh, heat tool. It's just going to be loud for a few seconds. Okay, obviously that's not what I used last time. It, I must have used the, the pen that's not working anymore. So I'm going to try just using this. And um, it's it comes out a lot better. Uh, I might try to move it with my... Actually, maybe a dry brush. Um, yeah, it dries pretty fast. The uh, ink pen that I was using, it, for some reason it got squished and it's not working anymore, so. And that's probably what I used initially when I did this, but that's okay. I'm going to go back in here just a little bit more. Yeah, the white, um, it takes a couple tries for it to kind of show up. It's very, very vague. The white paint, I should say. And now I am, I think I'm going to try to attempt to make a number with this fat pen. I'm going to make it look kind of sepia toned, making a little black and brown. And really, let's see, I'll do this as number two. Very, very lightly. So it looks like an old ink pen. Let me know if you guys want to do keep doing this and I'll keep doing it. It's, it's fun. It's good practice for me. It's good practice for anybody who wants to draw and paint. And um, it'd even be fun to do a whole series just on Edith Holden. Not just her flowers, but maybe get into her birds and some of the shrubs that she used to paint and draw. So now I'm going to take a black... Pen. Um, 
I have a few of them that I like to use as long as they're really, really tiny, micro. Oh, I thought I had three of them, but maybe I don't. So uh, this is a Sharpie. It's, it's very fine. I think it's a 0.5. It just says fine, actually. This is a Micron 02. 0.30 millimeter line width. This is very, very fine. I really like this one. Um, and I just very, very lightly go over the outlines. And I'm going to do it a little bit on the highlights here. I can't stress enough how much, if you want it to look like this, the less is more for this particular look. And I'm, I'm holding it at the end so I don't have too much control. I'm not doing this. And it just gives the lightest touch, which is kind of what I'm going for here. Uh, Danielle Don Donaldson has a, a few really great books on watercolor. She does beautiful illustrations, very dainty, petite um, illustrations. They're very whimsical. And so uh, if I, here's her book right here. Here's one of them anyway. Um, Creative Girl Mixed Media Techniques for an Artful Life. And she uses mostly um, watercolors, but she does do mixed media. And um, her her look is very, very, like I said, whimsical, and she uses a lot of the time um, a 0.3 mechanical pencil to do her illustrations. And uh, yeah, she's it's her her look is very um, recognizable, and I learned a lot from her book. So if you want to delve into more. <laughs> um, uh, you know, watercolor techniques. You might want to look into her books. And I'm going to do little tiny, tiny circles to imitate the center of the flower. And I'm going to do here. And we're done. Thanks for coming by and watching and all your sweet comments. It makes me want to keep doing this. So um, I love hearing all your nice comments. And thank you for watching and for subscribing. And I will see you next week. I'm going to do this once a week now. And um, I'll just... If you subscribe to my channel and you hit the little bell, you'll see whenever I do a post. See you later.